of young people don't have enough exercise. It's like the sit down job and the press button job, did manual labor, not the day. Yeah. I couldn't sit down in a chair for more than the night, no, <laughs> not like some people. Mm. Well, not too bad for me age, I don't suppose. <laughs> Plenty of fresh air and hard work. <laughs> well, it was working. Well, keep me fit. Didn't kill us, so did it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, left school at 40 and then you know, worked on the farm all your know, full time, but I suppose doing a bit before that probably. <laughs> Neighbours used to come in your evenings. He were lorry driver's mate, he was, and then there were an evacuee boy from London living next door helping me on the farm. He used to come in, we were out there Saturday making 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> Two titty, two titty lamps hung up on the ceiling. <clears throat> Plenty of fresh air and hard work. <laughs> Apple picker, he's broke. Got a mountain. Well, we make him do, but a uh, couple of things just, you know, it's, the pins just broke off. Uh. Not not going round. But he, he's doing it all right. Well, making it manage anyway. You always read one generation plan for the next. That's what he used to say. <laughs> Life apple tree the same as a human being. Something's going quick, others to hang on. <laughs> Years ago when you had grown mango, you used to go cider making in the morning and mango pulling it pulling the mango in the afternoon. And I go apple picking when the white frost stuck to the grass. <laughs> oh that was cold. <laughs> I remember one year years ago, the early season had not many apples. We finished apple picking the middle of November. And they had the hedge before Christmas. <laughs> you don't get a crop every year. Well, we didn't have them last year, not really, did we? Oh, well, you haven't been in all the orchards, not to really look at them. But uh, tree had them last year, I haven't got them this year. But uh, tree never had none last year, got them this year. I like, uh, did every other year sort of style. Oh, they don't have a heavy crap every year. I don't know what the sugar content will be this year, I'm sure. Or it'll be good or bad. They depend on the water, like the weather, how much rain we get to get into them. I expect at the moment, I expect the ground so dry, I expect it's good, you know, good. Oh, about seven or eight thousand gallons we used to make or sell in the yard. But then when we had our barrel filled, one year we made them up for a friend to get it up to Anko Apple Mill to chef them at it and filled up his five and nine gallon fat. And I think that year we made about 29,000. Oh, 1,500 now. 1,500 gallons. Years ago when we didn't have no apples, or, well, not enough for our own apples, we used to get about 100 tons of can. But uh, that cider wasn't much good, really. If we had it, no, we shouldn't sell it. But you can sell anything then. Well, how many taters you got first? You might have too many taters. You won't be able to bring in them. If you didn't get them from Kent, we have them from, from Normandy or in France, but that was good cider. In Brittany, but that Normandy were better than Brittany. Um, oh, you're right, we got them up there and we fry. They come across on a boat. Then they take them out the boat in the, oh, the, in bags, a yeah, boat full of bags. Then they take the bags out, put on lorries, and bring them up. Okay, that's 
One year, I think they're about two days before Christmas, they had some come across the bottom of the boat. They had well, never had brick enough. I thought it's boat, and, and they ate at um, Kennedy Brothers, I think, or Kennedy in Bristol. Come and uh, why don't we have them? Yeah. How many taters do you want? I got plenty. We said, well, I didn't know. And they said, well, you never prep me for nothing. See, they said, we got to get rid of them. They brought them up here and all the bags were steaming. Steamer, because they were, they'd been heating in the boat. <laughs> it, uh, well, we had them. Had them ever so cheap. I don't want to be paid for them. But ever so cheap, they let us have them there a couple of days before Christmas. <laughs> Not too many, Paul. Okay. You, you haven't got your half, have oh, you? Yeah? I got more than half. I don't know. That's a thin metal. They are that, see? How much more cider do you need down the bottom, Frank, to fill your barrels up? I haven't tried it yet. Well, there's still some empty down there. Yeah. Is there? Well, they, that top end, we, he's empty in there. You haven't started filling it yet, yeah? And then it, uh, what about the back one? What, um, are we top empty? We haven't put none in here yet, have us? Or have us? There's two empty ones there. And that, and a third one. <coughs> you haven't started well, there yet. Yeah. One, one we got in now, he's only about a quarter full. Mm. So the t there's still two empty ones there. Oh, I reckon there's two, two empties. Right empty. Alright. We should fill them up. With a bit of luck today. I thought there were, um, they must have been more empty than what I thought. But it's <clears throat> What's well, there is very sweet and thick. <clears throat> but then I must have some back in the holding tank. There must be, well, there must be 50 gallons down there. And that'd be about half a barrel to come up, to pump that. What I can see a big press ball. On soft apples, you don't press them dry. It's, unless the apples is hard enough to take the pressure, you don't press them up tight. No. That's why back the other day we said he wasn't pressing it. The um, apples too soft. And they don't fill the bag up. They don't fill the bag up, not get yeah. hard. That's right. Meant for, well, it was designed for a more crispier type apple. Not cider apples, but it. Doing it quite well, really, compared to um, I think roller presses, anyway. Well, these roller presses won't do soft ones at all. No. You just got, you know, it's all swings and roundabouts, really. Well, I think we want a better power washer, though, clean it bag out. No, I think you've got to have hard apples to, to fill the bags up. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't get the pressure. Now, those apple bags might come from Kent that were like what they put the um, corn in over there. About well, two, two and a half hundred weight a piece, each bag. <laughs> they wouldn't be, wouldn't be allowed to lift them now. <laughs> We got some of the bags out there now, loving the lot, tied up. Had one bag once with German, a swastika on it. <laughs> I don't like central heat now, honestly. I still have it natural. No, I read the stuffy. <laughs> Might and turn it on. <laughs> now that's where you get the flu, I reckon, getting these hot central heated rooms and then go outside and get cold and 
And then the hot rooms are germs are breed. I've never been used to it. I I like going to the bedroom and smell the smell smell the coldness. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't I wouldn't like going to the bedroom all hot. When the cold protector close on. <laughs> Uh, smell the cold air. Yeah. Uh, the central heating job, that's not it. Well, it didn't naturally, really. Oh, these big old holes, see, get in there all hot, and if one got the flu, the whole lot got it. <laughs> and that's where the germs are breathing, the heat in it. I've never had a flu jab. Dad's cousin years ago, he had one. He never had us a bad in all his life. Now, after a cold job, though, but your cold freeze and your cold job on for your fingers. And then you have to put on the engine exhaust to warm your fingers up a bit. <laughs> Any engine, what is growing apples? We have a long pipe to take the exhaust out, the, out through the top of the door. We used to put your hands around that pipe to warm your fingers up. <laughs> and one winter, we had to pipe across the yard for pumping down in the bottom house this side uh, where the new press is now. And that pipe got froze up, sorry. <laughs> no, the push button job though. <laughs> Well, when we were children, Dad had about a 24 cow, and he had a regular man on. I think milk were about eight pence a gallon. <laughs> Old fashioned eight pence. <laughs> you know, made a living. Start off with more than one pumping very fast, he's pumping faster, no one get worse morning. Very slow this morning to start off with. Well, when we kept cows years ago and had, you know, food about the yard and that, well, see, we had, well, the full of rats. But uh, when we start cider making, get some apple pumice there, and probably get a few coming back. Because our neighbor down there, he, well, he spent one or two hundred pounds a year in poison. But he didn't big bucket for some. Uh, where, there's, where there's food and poultry, rats will come. I'm not afraid of rats. No, they don't hurt you unless you got them up in a the corner, then they might fly out or do anything, but no, I'm not afraid of them. They come out in the bedroom, then go in Haro's room. Haro says, Rat in your. <laughs> then they say, It's going downstairs now. <laughs> Where we end up to, I don't know. <laughs> they don't hurt you, you don't upset them, they're more right. <laughs> you have to come under this door there.